Good morning and welcome to our Father's Day worship at Maple United Methodist Church in Battle Creek, Michigan. It's June 21st, 2020. I'm Reverend Linda Stoddard, the pastor here at Maple. I want to apologize to you who have been faithfully viewing our worship services on YouTube for last Sunday's glitch. We suffered a four-day power outage here in Battle Creek and we weren't able to record or post our service on YouTube as usual. In fact, we couldn't even post a disclaimer that we wouldn't be on the air. We hope you'll forgive us for the disruption to your weekly schedule. We'd love to greet you in person at our 11 a.m. worship now that we're meeting back together at the church. We will be continuing our YouTube worship and we also offer a daily blog on Facebook at Maple UMC. Again, welcome, and let's begin our worship together. When we long for the special effects we think that life should offer, it's enough for us that God comes in a soft summer shower. When our hearts are cracked with the drought of doubt, it's enough for us that God opens up the fountains of faith. When our senses are deadened by the sales pitches of our culture, it's enough for us that God wraps us in the silence of his grace. God is enough. Will you pray with me, please? O oh God of our everything, the world seems crazy right now. It's frightening how many things are going wrong. War, natural disasters, pandemics, economic crises. We see suffering all around. Help us to remember that you are present in every circumstance with every being in distress. Quiet our fears. Enable us to take action to be your hands and heart in this hurting world. O oh God, as your congregation gathered together this day, we lift into your presence those who are so heavy in our hearts, who need your special touch, who need your healing, who need your grace. We pray, O oh Lord, for families that are torn apart by grief, those who have lost loved ones, not just in the pandemic, but to other causes as well. We pray for families that have lost husbands and wives, fathers and mothers, children, for those that are struggling to make sense of the morass of grief that surrounds them. We pray for our nation, O oh Lord, caught up in the throes of anger and protest and confusion, wrapped in the hurt that comes from prejudice and misunderstanding, grappling with questions that we thought we had answered long ago and yet have somehow just pushed to the back burner and ignored. We pray this day, O oh Lord, for your guidance, for your wisdom, we pray that our eyes might be opened, our hearts might be sensitized to the world around us. That we wouldn't just shut off folks we don't agree with or with things that we don't understand. That we'd be willing to learn, to listen, to question. We ask for your guidance for our leaders in our country, in our state, in our world, as they try to make sense of what's been going on lately, as they deal with the pandemic and all of the fallout from it, we ask that you would give them your wisdom and your grace, and above all, a sense of compassion for your people. Be with each one of us this day as we seek new answers from your word. Speak to us and bind us together continually in your love. 
enable us in the storms that swirl around us to hear your still, small voice. For we ask it in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray together as your children, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and all the glory forever and ever. Amen. The scripture this morning comes from the Old Testament on this Father's Day. I'm reading from the 19th chapter of 1 Kings, verses 9 through 12. And Elijah came to a cave and lodged there, and behold, the word of the Lord came to him, and he said to him, What are you doing here, Elijah? And he said, I've been very jealous for the Lord, the God of hosts. For the people of Israel have forsaken the covenant, thrown down thine altars, slain thy prophets with the sword, and I, only I, am left. And they seek my life to take it away. And the Lord said, Go forth, stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by, and a great and strong wind rent the mountains, and broke in pieces the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in the wind. And after the wind, an earthquake, but the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, a fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, a still, small voice. The word of God for the people of God, thanks be to God. Storms. We've had a lot of them lately. Oh, I'm not just talking about the big winds of June the 10th that knocked out half the power in Battle Creek and Calhoun County, as well as other parts of the state. That was bad enough. But we've been dealing with other storms as well. Rainstorms in the thumb of the state that caused two dams to fail, devastating some small towns in the area and inconveniencing the folks in Saginaw and Midland. A storm of protest after the killing of a number of folks at the hands of police. A storm story of murder hornets that kind of got buried in the big storm of the coronavirus. It reminded me of a couple of winters that I went through in southwestern Michigan when blizzards forced the cancellation of our worship services for three Sundays in a row. And I remember standing in my kitchen on the third Sunday of cancellation, the second year in a row, and bitterly complaining to the Lord, okay, Lord, I've had it. Enough is enough. I've had it. And I remember the question that permeated the quiet of my kitchen that morning. It was a still, small voice, like the one Elijah heard in the mountains. A voice so quiet, I barely heard it, and yet so powerful that it drowned out the howling winds of the blizzard outside and drowned out the sputterings of this housebound creature. What have you learned? Well, what have we learned from 11 weeks of forced closure, followed by a half a week with no power? What have we learned from staying home from school, from work, from shopping, from worship? 
What have we learned from the closing of businesses, the cancellation of appointments, the suspension of services, the loss of income? What lessons are there in the anger and protest that are still gripping our nation? I think one thing that we've all learned is that good Samaritans still exist. That the parable Jesus told in the 10th chapter of Luke was more than a nice tale about a despised foreigner who took care of a Jew that had been mugged. 21st century Samaritans wield chainsaws and rakes, Clorox wipes, mops and garbage bags. They offer to drive you to appointments or do your shopping when you're too afraid and fearful to do those things yourself. They supply bottles of water and snacks and hot meals and, and face masks to those on the front line of our 2020 disasters. They call to see how you're doing. If you need anything, or they just show up at the end of your driveway with a plate of cookies or a pair of bunny ears and a smile. Good Samaritans nowadays wear blue jeans, sweatpants, and scrubs. They drive jeeps and motorcycles. They ride bikes. They walk. Some even let their fingers do the walking on their smartphones or their computer keyboards. And they bind up our wounds by getting our groceries, by listening to our fears and anxieties, by just being there when we need a friendly voice. Good Samaritans still exist. Another lesson that I learned during those long ago blizzards in Berrien County and relearned this spring of 2020 is very simple. I need the church. I need this church. Without church, my whole week is thrown out of whack, you know what I mean? Quite frankly, I have a hard time keeping track of the days of the week when we don't have church. Without church, I no longer count from Sunday to Sunday. I find myself counting from tragedy to tragedy, from problem to problem, from difficulty to difficulty. It's kind of like the movie title, if this is Tuesday, this must be Belgium. I find myself asking as I turn on the news, I wonder what's wrong now. Without our Sunday morning gathering, my whole week is ski jawed, out of sorts, confused. More importantly, my whole life is mixed up, cockeyed, out of balance. Some of you have expressed the very same feelings. Without worshiping together for almost three months, it felt like there was a piece missing. Something was weird. Something wasn't quite right in our personal worlds. A corollary to that lesson is equally simplistic. I discovered that without our worshiping together in the flesh, there are certain things missing from my life. The smiles and the hugs. The music, especially the sounds of the organ or piano, and our voices raised together in prayer and song. News about each other's lives the significant happenings in the lives of our family and the church. Missing, too, was a chance to give emotionally, spiritually, even financially. Without our weekly gatherings, I was missing an opportunity to minister to you and to have you minister to me. There was no uniting of prayer. No sharing of needs, no bearing one another's burdens. 
They say that absence makes the heart grow fonder. Well, during our three months of forced vacation, I learned anew, we need each other. We need to gather together for worship. The author of Hebrews wasn't just making noise when he admonished the church. Let us not give up meeting together, but let us encourage one another. He recognized that there was strength in unity. Prayers lifted together seem stronger, more powerful. Hymns that are sung together have more meaning, and they usually sound better than us singing alone. Scriptures read and studied together often make more sense and are more easily applied to our lives than those scriptures studied in private. The words of Jesus recorded in Matthew chapter 18 verse 20 suddenly took on a deeper meaning. Where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. We need the church. Another thing that the storms of late have taught us is the necessity of being prepared. You remember the panic buying of the first weeks of the pandemic? Toilet paper, Kleenex, even paper towels were nowhere to be found. Bleach, Clorox wipes, hand sanitizer didn't exist. Canned soup, macaroni and cheese, cookies, crackers, even milk started to be rationed. Some of those things are still kind of hard to find. And then we added a new storm of a potential meat shortage. And suddenly the price of hamburgers skyrocketed. And pork chops and chicken disappeared from the meat counters altogether. The blizzards of 1976 and 77 that I endured in Berrien County taught me the importance of making sure I had the necessities. So when the COVID-19 crisis hit, I didn't have to make a mad dash to the store because our pantry and freezer were well stocked. In fact, for the first month, the only shopping I had to do was for bread, milk, oh yeah, cat food. The spiritual application of this lesson is quite simple. We need to always be prepared for our Lord's return. Like COVID-19 and the floods and even the windstorms that appeared almost without warning, our Lord will return. Paul reminded the Thessalonians, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night. No warning. Jesus himself told his followers in the 12th chapter of Luke, You also must be ready, for the Son of Man is coming at an unexpected hour. If we keep our freezers and cupboards and refrigerators well stocked in case of some impending storm or disaster, should we not be as spiritually prepared for the unannounced return of Christ? Another lesson that the coronavirus shutdown and even the windstorm taught us is so simple that we probably missed it. We are creatures of habit. How many of you walked into a room during the power outage and flipped the light switch and wondered why the lights didn't come on? Sometimes going to church becomes a habit, a somewhat stale routine, a Sunday morning ritual, a taken for granted, if this is Sunday, I must go to church, obligation. Eleven weeks of a government-ordered shutdown forcing the cancellation of worship services gave me a new appreciation for the freedom and right that we have to worship where and when we please, 
even if it's in our jammies and our living rooms. If we were in a communistic or socialist controlled country, we could not be meeting together for worship on Sunday, much less dialing into a YouTube version of worship on a Tuesday afternoon. In those dictatorial regimes, it would be the government dictating against our worship, not the weather or some worldwide pandemic. If we did not live in this free land, we would not have the opportunity to flick a channel or download a program off the internet to participate in worship while the world around us is going crazy. Indeed, in this digital age, where there's a will, there can be a way to worship together, even during a quarantine. Necessity is the mother of invention, as we here at Maple discovered as we were able to go digital in less than 48 hours, thanks to some very capable help. During our time apart, people prayed together over the phone. Families rediscovered doing daily devotions together. Folks learned how to worship online or with the TV, and that allowed us to put some sense of order back into our topsy-turvy world. It's easy to complain about weather patterns and jet streams that create hurricane force winds that take out our power grids. And it's not hard to mutter about how unfair it is for the governor or the bishop to tell us we cannot gather together for worship. Sometimes it's a lot easier to find a needle in a haystack than to find a blessing in a forced lockdown or a quarantine. But as I've learned to listen to the voice in the storm these past three months, I realized we all had the opportunity to learn some very important lessons. Good Samaritans don't just live in New Testament Israel. They live in Michigan and even in Battle Creek. Our Sunday morning gathering of believers is essential. It's vital to our spiritual well-being for the six days that will follow today. We need each other to minister to and to be ministered to. Quite frankly, I missed you. Our weekly life seems somehow less complete without you in it. Our gathering together is also a time for sharing for learning, for being fed by the Word of God and by each other's faith. It's a time for empowerment, for getting through the week that lies ahead of us. We need to adopt the motto of the Girl Scouts and be prepared, spiritually as well as physically. We need to have our minds and our spirits and our lives as well stocked as our pantries and our freezers. Most importantly, I learned that sometimes a break in the routine, an interruption of the Sunday morning business as usual, can be good for us. It gives us a chance to step back and reevaluate why we go to church and what happens to us emotionally and spiritually when we can't or don't. It heightens our awareness and appreciation of each other and the unique blend of ministries and personalities and talents that are here within these four walls. All of the storms that we've gone through of late have made me aware of what those who are not attending services are missing. The fellowship, the encouragement, the inspiration, the unity 
of the faith. These past three months and all the storms that they've brought have made me realize anew that maybe a little variety is the spice of life. A little change in the ordinary enables us to better appreciate what we have. As I continue to contemplate the question that that still small voice gave to me all those years ago, as I consider what I've learned by having my regular daily and weekly routine so rudely interrupted, I'm reminded of the word of the Lord in the 21st chapter of Revelation. He who sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And I wonder, I wonder if this is his way of beginning a new thing in us and in his church. Let us pray. Lord, we have to confess that we are not always paying attention when you speak. And it's so easy for the world to drown out your words. In the silence of these moments, in the silences of our days, may we hear that still small voice speaking to us, teaching us, informing us anew of your challenge to us as your children. Speak, Lord, but, but more than that, speak so that we will listen and hear your voice in the storms. In Jesus' holy and precious name, I pray. Remember, wherever you go this week, you're not going there by accident. Wherever you are, God has sent you. Wherever you find yourself, he has something he wants to do through you, right there, right now. Christ who lives in you has something powerful he wants to change in and through and because of you. Listen for that still small voice and go in the grace and power and love of God the Father and Jesus Christ, his Son. Amen.